at first, I, it was stressful. I remember, and so even today, I find going to conferences a little bit stressful. I always have, feel a little bit of anxiety about presenting my work. Um, that's definitely become much easier over time. But it was my first conference, and you always worry that you're going to run into some um, really famous, prestigious, renowned political scientists. And I remember thinking, like, oh, you know, what if I mess up my presentation, or what if I fumble my words, and what if I forget what I'm supposed to say? <laughs> I'm actually more interested in comparative politics, but I started my research freshman year working on American because that was what I knew the most about, and so I could dive right in. And so this is actually the project that I've been basically working on since then has been polarization in Congress. Yeah, I'm a junior. My name is Connor Phillips. I decided to major in political science very early on in my Duke career, probably around the first semester of my freshman year. Um, I'd come in knowing more about the public policy program and sort of drawn to that because that was the program that had a lot of publicity, had a lot of funding. Um, but I ended up participating in the FOCUS program my first semester at Duke and there I took two political science classes. Um, one more focused on political philosophy with Professor Gillespie and another one more focused on methods with Professor DeMarkey. And I absolutely loved both courses and sort of started to realize that the political science department was where all the interesting questions that I wanted answers to were being discussed and thought about. And so I just, I think by the end of that experience, I pretty much made up my mind to be a political science major. I've known Connor for a little while now. He took, um, last year he took a class that I teach that's essentially on research methods. And he was really an amazing student in that class. So not only did he really just sort of master the material that I was teaching, but he wanted more. And so he actually asked me if I would meet with him once a week to go over more complicated statistical procedures. So he, he, had, a, he had sort of understood the, the basic linear models that I was using, the basic causal inference techniques that I was using, but he wanted to look at more complex strategies, including maximum likelihood models. So we would meet once a week to go over those maximum likelihood models. The paper that he's presenting here is actually the paper that he produced for my class. And so when Midwest was soliciting, um, sort of sent out an email to participants about this undergraduate poster session they were going to run, I thought immediately of Connor. because. I know, I've known for a long time that he really dreams of being a political scientist and that's why he's working so hard at it. Over break I heard back that Midwest had accepted the paper and that I would, well the proposal, and that I could present, would present a poster on it at their annual Chicago conference in April. If I could have your attention, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My name is Paula McLean of Duke University. I am president of the Midwest Political Science Association, and I want to welcome all of you. It is so important for undergraduates to come to these meetings because, for quite frankly, many of you really don't know what your professors actually do in terms of what a professional political scientist does. We're not just like teachers that you see us in class, but there's a whole professional life that is built around political science. And it's always very nice to see when programs and institutions bring undergraduates to professional meetings. Standing with me is my colleague, Carrie Haney, also from Duke, who was a program chair this year, program co-chair with Lisa, um, Lisa Garcia Bedoya from UC Berkeley. So I'm gonna turn it over to Carrie to talk a little bit about the program. I and many of us in the room were coming up with the ranks in graduate school and even before that. Uh, the thinking, the uh, research, the methods, the models uh, were predicated uh, on the notion that having a non-white president was some time in the future, the distant future, and not the foreseeable future. Uh, and we did research on that premise. Uh, so I want my colleagues to engage with me in a conversation or with you in a conversation about what it means now to have had a non-white president and what it means for the future, for the work that we do, and for the discipline uh, that we're in. Conferences are work. They're work because what you're doing is you're coming to these 
gatherings or coming to the conference to connect with colleagues who are working in areas similar to you or that you just want to hear about new research in other areas. And this is an opportunity for scholars to float ideas of something that they're thinking about or that they're in the very beginnings of in terms of research and to get feedback. And it's no of no use to do research if you don't get it out to the public and disseminate it. Professional conferences allow us to take the show on the road for a first run. It's also a time where people, you can, um, um, people who have written books and there are, are people who are favorable to the book or criticize the book, come together on a panel and it's called Author Meets Critics. And so you can get to hear what's good about the author's ideas, what people feel were under, undeveloped or underdeveloped, and you get to then hear from the authors themselves. And in many ways, it's a very humbling experience, but it's a scholarly building or an intellectual building for the author to hear where she probably didn't do the best job that she could or where what she did was so important that it's really going to make a paradigm shift in whatever area that it is. The characteristics measure predicts support for the death penalty, support for three strikes laws, opposition to affirmative action, and again support for housing segregation. So in a traditional public opinion model where we're putting this item against these standard measures of racial attitudes, we see that dehumanization measured explicitly significantly predicts these very important and significant political preferences. The first time I went to a conference was my second year of graduate school. I went to the Midwest Political Science Association annual conference, which is always held in Chicago. And I was just observing the first time I went. So I didn't present anything. I just went to see what it was all about and to listen to my professors present their work and to see how other graduate students presented. So I presented my first conference paper not too long after. So it was about a year later when I had some research that I had finally conducted on my own. And um, that was my first conference presentation. It was at the Midwest Political Science Conference a year later. When it comes to graduate students, uh, not only do we get them introduced into larger professional networks where they meet scholars in their field, uh, get their ideas out, and then take on new ideas themselves. And that continues once they graduate. Uh, I often will have dinner or lunch with former graduate students uh, to talk about their research, to, to introduce them to other scholars, and to make sure they're fully involved in the profession. Uh, because it's not only that you do work on your campus, uh, but you engage in an exchange of ideas with others from other campuses and even other countries. So it's a very important part of the mentorship to get graduate students engaged in conferences while they're in the graduate program, but even after they leave to check in uh, with them to see how they're doing and whether or not they're connected in the right kinds of ways. It's also a time to kind of renew friendships with people that you were in graduate school with or that you served on committees with or that you were on, on the faculty with at some institution and conferences may be the only time that you're able to see these people in person and so for the Midwest you see people like once a year but you know you're going to see them once a year because they're going to be at the Midwest and so everybody starts planning before the conference getting appointments with who they're going to meet for a drink who they're going to go out for dinner with it's just an opportunity for intellectual engagement intellectual renewal and meeting new people. Um, here today, I started out by attending a panel. Um, one of the authors on the panel was actually wrote a paper that I read and I'm sort of using and drawing on for my thesis. So I actually got to meet him and talk with him afterwards about my thesis and about the paper. So that, that was a really incredible experience and I enjoyed that. Um, I also went to a couple of networking sessions, saw some other panel talks. Um, and was also able to go to the undergrad reception in the evening and meet some of the other undergraduates who will be presenting. I do really like the style of the conference so far. What I thought was really interesting about the panel setup was how the papers that are presented at the panel are sort of works in progress, and you can see the authors thinking through the issues that they're presenting in the paper, and the discussants all gave really detailed and insightful feedback that I thought, I could see how this process is really helpful in fashioning a finished product. And I'm just really excited to share what I have in my poster with everyone, because I've been talking about it already to people who say, oh, what are you presenting? So I'll just be excited to present it to more people again tomorrow.
I am a little nervous about knowing that scholars who are working in fields like this one, including this one, will probably be there and might see my poster. But I think that I've done a presentation that asks a question that hasn't been really asked before in the field and comes up with a convincing answer. So I think that I should have something to be proud of and I should be, the presentation should I think go well. My poster is examining asymmetric partisan polarization in the House of Representatives, which is basically the phenomenon that although both parties have moved away from the center over the past several decades, it's been generally noticed that the Republicans have moved further and faster than the Democrats. And this, although political scientists are aware of a lot of different phenomena that help contribute to partisan polarization itself, like constituency change, uh, institutional change in Congress that, is, that interacts with that, these, two, these factors should have a pretty similar impact on both parties, so the causes of this asymmetry aren't nearly as well understood. So one, one hypothesis that's particularly prominent, especially in the media, is that the Republicans' unique behavior is caused by new, recently elected Republican members of the House who don't have any political careers before they, be, they were elected to Congress, who aren't interested in moving up within the institutional ranks, who aren't very fo even very focused on re-election, but instead are pursuing very specific ideological goals. And it's these, this group of people that most journalistic accounts tend to depict as driving the Republican caucus to the right. And so I was interested in investigating this link between lack of political experience and ideological behavior. So I run a mediation model that basically simulates the effect of moving a Republican legislator from the 1970s to the 2000s with and without having had previous legislative experience and seeing if that effect of mediates a significant amount of the polarization that you would go through. In other words, is a Republican in the 2000s with out who hadn't had served in a legislature previously be to being elected to Congress going to be more ideologically extreme than one who did. Okay. And what I found actually is if you disaggregate representatives by previous legislative experience, there's no difference. Like these two groups have polarized in the exact same fashion. So there is no actual impact, substantive impact, of having served in a legislature previously on your ideology, which indicates there's something else at work. And I find that contrary to what the theory assumes, there isn't really much of a difference at all. And as a matter of fact, Republicans are slightly more experienced, and there isn't really any difference between experience and experience, Republicans who held office before and who didn't hold office before in terms of their ideological scores. Both have polarized basically in the same way. Right. So, so how did it work out overall? Are you inspired to be a political scientist? Like more inspired than you already were? <laughs> like, I think so, yeah. The first, especially the first panel, just having that experience for the first time was okay. really, I could, I could see myself being up there and doing that. And it was a little intimidating, but also a little exciting. And I can see you there too. I really can.